Greetings, dear tankers. As you've probably guessed today, I'm going to talk to you about the worst tanks in World of Tanks Blitz. The tanks you should never buy. I really can't fathom why these tanks are even in the game, let alone why someone would have them in their account. Just imagine, someone saved up their hard-earned money and due to inexperience bought one of these tanks. Now they're sitting there regretting their decision with tears in their eyes. To prevent that from happening to you, I've decided to introduce a new segment on my channel. I'm going to create a whole playlist called Blitz Bastards and regularly make videos like this. After all, there are more than 160 premium tanks in our game and at least half of them are just plain awful, to the point where it makes you want to cry. To make this video, I had to endure quite a few battles in these tanks, and during the game I just wanted to uninstall the game, but when I finally managed to play a sufficient number of battles in each tank, I needed some serious help. You know. In short, I've invested a lot of time and nerves into creating this video, and I hope you enjoy it and consider subscribing to my channel. My goal is to reach 10,000 subscribers by the new year but it all depends on you. So get some snacks and drinks ready, and I wish you a pleasant viewing experience. But before we start, there will be a short advertising break. Let's go. Let's go. Friends, in today's tech-savvy world, it's no secret that for many people, YouTube is the primary source of income. Each of you can start creating videos right now and earn from it. You don't even need a computer because the most crucial aspect of any video is high-quality sound. That's why I want to recommend an excellent service from my friends, My Vocal AI. This service uses artificial intelligence and can replicate your voice or any other voice in just a few clicks. All you need to do is record 25 phrases or upload an audio file with any voice and the neural network will create an exact copy. After that, you can use your voice to narrate any text or even listen to how you sing different tracks. And now I beg to see you dance just one more time. Ooh, happy, make me wanna cry. And with the promo code SWETCHVOICE23, you'll get a 23% discount. Start earning online with my vocal AI. All the details will be in the description. Friends, before we dive into this circus of abominations, I'd like to make it clear that this top list is purely my subjective opinion and may differ from yours. However, comments are always welcome, and you can also suggest which tanks you'd like me to feature in the next video. Let's start with the first tank that kicks off today's parade of catastrophes. And that's the AT-15A, a premium tier 7 tank. Though it's a stretch to call it a tank, it's more like a leaky tub. This is how you'll be moving around in this bucket if you ever decide to buy it. Because the maximum speed of this British bucket is only 20 kilometers per hour. You'll be crawling across the map at the speed of a sleepy snail and will arrive at the flank as the very last one. And that's if you're lucky and all the enemies happen to be headed in the same direction. If not, well... But that's not all. If an enemy sneaks up on your rear, get ready for the worst. Welcome to the club, buddy. Because this bucket can spin even heavy tanks around, let alone light and medium tanks. Well, someone might think, what does it matter that it's slow? It has armor, right? To those people, I have just one question. When will help arrive for you? Well, okay, I used to think at first that this bucket could actually tank. But in reality, it's quite the opposite. Everyone and their grandma will penetrate you because you have a huge bump on your head that can easily be pierced, even by lower tier tanks. So I wouldn't count on the armor of this tank, and in fact, I wouldn't risk adding this British bucket to my garage. The only good thing about it is the high damage per minute. Every three and a half seconds, you'll be dealing 200 damage to the enemy. But even that won't help you get rid of the nagging thoughts and regrets after the purchase. I don't know what else to say about it. So let's move on to the next tank. Angry Connor. Now many of you may want to throw stones or dislikes at me after this, but remember, it's just my subjective opinion. Yes, the tank has an astonishing credit earning potential, and it can fill your coffers even better than some tier 8 tanks boasting a whopping 230% credit coefficient. But this money-making opportunity will come at the cost of severe pain and suffering because driving this tank feels like being a tortoise. Forward, this contraption can only manage 12 kilometers per hour, while in reverse, it can reach a whopping 32 kilometers per hour. It's incredibly inconvenient, and sometimes in battle your patience will wear thin, forcing you to turn around and head towards the enemy in reverse. During this maneuver, you risk being blown up at any moment, and trust me, high explosive shells are your worst enemies because this tank has absolutely no armor. Playing Angry Connor requires extreme caution. A tank like the KV-2 can send you back to the garage with a single shot, and they don't even need to load a high explosive round. So, stick to the second or even third line, shooting from the bushes, and luckily, you can get there without turning around. Playing like a rat is the way to go for this tank because the gun here is where it shines. Excellent accuracy, great damage per minute, and incredible penetration for a tier five tank. Its credit earning potential and gun are its only pros. Everything else is simply horrendous, and playing this tank is pure agony. 
If you're a masochist, then you're in luck, and I can recommend this tank for you. Before we move on, I have a small request for you. I would like you to hit the like button and leave a comment. This will help the video get recommended to more people, preventing them from ever buying these terrible tanks. Now, let's continue. In third place, we have the French cockroach of tier 7, the AMX 1357. Why do I call it a cockroach, you might ask? Well, because it's small and annoying, infuriating both enemies and those who play it. It all comes down to its gun, which is hard to even call a gun because it has a laughable caliber of 57 millimeters. And yes, you heard that right. It's a tier 7 tank. With a measly 90 damage per shot, it won't intimidate anyone. Your opponent might think you're not shooting, but rather blowing air in their direction. Well, not everything is that bad. At least the intraclip reload is just one second. I thought the same until I played a battle with it. In reality, it's just dreadful. You'll have to spend a lot of time unloading all the shells, all the while risking getting shot in return because you have to constantly stay in front of your opponent, shooting, shooting, and shooting. But that's not all the problems with this gun. Due to its small caliber, your penetration is weak, and you'll need to load premium rounds frequently, which significantly affects your credit earnings after a battle. Well, we've talked about the blowing air gun. What about armor? Right, there isn't any. So maybe it's fast? Yes, there's something good about this cockroach. It's relatively fast and accelerates quickly, but it's far from being the fastest among light tanks. Its top speed of 61 kilometers per hour is even somewhat embarrassing for a tank like this. Okay, let's move on. In fourth place, we have another sluggish monstrosity called the VK168.01P. This tank is dreadful both in appearance and in performance. It's like a subpar mouse at tier eight, incredibly slow and unwieldy, with a top speed of just 20 kilometers per hour. But with a whopping mass of 168 tons, what can you really expect? However, there are some pros to this, for instance, in gravity mode, it can ram opponents hard. But why bother with this when the KV-5 is almost better in every aspect? It's so slow that you'll often arrive at the flank last. But logically, if a tank is slow, it should have armor, right? On one hand, this tank does have armor, and it's not bad at all. You'll frequently bounce shots and be able to break through enemy positions, leading your team to victory. But it's not as smooth as it may seem. The armor has plenty of weak spots. For instance, everyone will penetrate the lower frontal plate, and if you hide behind cover, shells will automatically find their way into your commander's cupola. You can try angling, but on this unwieldy hunk of metal, it's unlikely to work. Plus, considering the size of this tank, which is roughly the size of two buses, you'll be spotted from the other end of the map, making it easier for enemies to hit you. As for the gun, it looks decent on paper, but in reality, I wasn't too impressed. It can deal a hefty punch of 460 damage, but the long reload time and terrible accuracy won't let you dominate without effort. The damage per minute is a pitiful 1,900, which is critically low for a tier eight tank. In PVP, any tier eight heavy tank will wipe you out, and by the time you reach your position, you'll have lost half your hit points. I recommend buying this bucket only for gravity mode, and those events are quite rare, so it's better to get the KV-5. It's cheaper and more interesting. Let's move on. And the cherry on top of this iceberg is another lumbering monstrosity with a highly patriotic camouflage, the T-28 HTC. I think you've already noticed the pattern that most of these terrible tanks have poor maneuverability, and it's no surprise because in our game, speed is essential for quickly getting out of trouble. The T-28 HTC is incapable of that. When it first appeared in the game, it seemed like a well-armored tank, but over time, everyone learned how to penetrate its cheeks. Even a 40% newbie won't have trouble aiming at those two gray bumps that you can't hide. To make matters worse, it simply doesn't move. With a maximum speed of only 29 kilometers per hour and weak acceleration, you could watch a movie while you drive to the flank. God forbid the enemies end up in a different direction. You might as well accept that the battle is lost because by the time you get back, it's either a victory or the entire enemy team killing you as the last survivor. The only thing that can save you from a fast enemy is the gun, which has decent horizontal gun arc flexibility. However, it doesn't aim up or down, which can be quite uncomfortable when playing this soda can. Moreover, the low damage per minute of just 2,400 is insufficient for a tier seven tank destroyer. The single shot damage is tolerable at 310, but the penetration is not the highest, which means you'll have to use premium rounds, further reducing your credit earnings. Although to be honest, the credit earnings on this tank are already pretty low. In short, this tank is dreadfully slow, with average firepower and armor. It won't dominate anyone in random battles, and will likely be the one taking hits in every match. I don't recommend buying it, or any of the other tanks in this video for that matter. However, it's your money, and you have the final say on how to spend it. I hope this video has been useful, and most importantly, interesting for you. Once again, I'd like to remind you to share your opinions about these tanks in the comments, and suggest which tanks I should include in the next video. Thanks for watching, and see you soon. Goodbye.